Hey guys, this is Josh with Stover Snakes, and uh, it's that time of year right now where uh, I'm putting the rest of my adults in cremation. And I was going to take you guys kind of uh, how I do it. I mean, there's a lot of other ways that other people do it. And uh, what I've heard from other people and what I've seen on the web and stuff is, you know, people cool them down to only about 50 degrees, somewhere between like 45 to 60 degrees. And I actually put my snakes a little bit colder than that. Um, I actually kind of let wet let uh, the own weather take its course I put them out in the garage and like a little shelf unit and uh, I mean after about a month in brumation they'll go anywhere from like 38 40 degrees cold and I mean they're completely fine it's the way I do it it seems to do a lot better than just cooling them down to 50 but I'm gonna take you guys do a little tutorial of how I uh, set up the cages for brumation now if you guys don't know already my snakes I use newspaper bedding and easy decor or whatever but I actually use a different bedding form it's funny as I made a video already of this and I tried to upload it and it didn't work so I actually have to load it to my computer and then do it so that's why I make another one go ahead and show them off because I'm getting them out anyways my white sided Brooks female and she's doing pretty good she's been off of food for about two weeks oh forgot about that um before you guys put them in brumation, what I like to do is, you know, try to feed them as much as possible. If they want to eat, let them eat, get them nice and fat. And then um, about two weeks prior to, you know, feeding, don't feed them at all. Let them poop, you know, make sure they ain't got any food left in their stomach. And what I do is I keep take them off my heat tape and keep them at room temperature for about a week or two. And this guy's actually been about two and a half weeks out of room temperature. And, uh... When, when I do that, I'm basically setting them up, oh, it's going to get cold soon, so it's not like a shock. You know, they all suddenly go from like 82 to 50, and that's not good. You don't want to shock your snakes. But, um, okay, let me take it back here, show you what I do. Now, a lot of people use uh, bedding for hibernation. They use aspen bedding or uh, some other kind of bedding, you know, wood and stuff. I particularly hate using wood. I do not like using wood at all because... It gets up underneath your scales. I mean, you have a chance of getting respiratory infection. It gets lodged up all over the place. Um, all sorts of bad stuff. It holds all their poop and pee a lot better. I mean, as in, like, it's easy to clean, but you don't want to have a bunch of poop and pee in their cages. So, take out all the bedding. I mean, uh, newspaper, clean out the cage. Now, this product right here is what I use. It's called CareFresh. What it actually is, it's just like the leftover follicles when they make paper. It's real nice and soft. It doesn't get lodged up underneath their scales. It doesn't have any dust or any smell to it. It's perfect. That's why I use it. This big bag right here costs probably about 20 bucks. And you can get it cheaper than that. You know where to look for it. And uh, you can find it like at your local horse stores or pet stores. I would look somewhere else besides the pet store. They might try to overcharge you. But a bag like this can fill up uh, probably about eight of these toads, and I've already got, I think, seven of them in brumation. So I got, I think, like eight or nine toads so far that I mean, I'm still going to have some left over, so it's great stuff. And you, what you want to do is you want to have enough in there where the snake can actually coil up underneath it or shove it up into a corner and, you know, like make a little nest with it in case, you know, he gets a little too cold and he wants to bundle up. Plus, it helps with stress, makes them feel more like they're in hibernation, cremation, whatever. Always important to start off with fresh water. I'm going to go do that real quick. Even though they get cooled down, a lot they still need to drink water and they will drink water and you want to check the, your cages and brumation at least once every week or two to make sure that their waters are you know clean you know they're not everything's fine and if you do it like I do where you put your snakes in on very um, like out in the garage on very very cold days where you think it might be freezing you need to go check on your snakes, make sure the water ain't frozen. If the water starts to freeze, that means your snake could freeze too. You know, freeze to that. So watch out with that. Another thing is when you put them in brumation, you don't want them to be out in the open 
with lights and stuff going on. You don't really want people walking by its cage or taking them out at all. You just want to leave him be as much as possible. And what I do is you want to keep him in a dark room. I mean, like I said, I put him in a shelf and it's got a little door that closes on it. And that's what I use. And that seems to do the best. I mean, you really don't, because, I mean, he's going to be in suspended animation. He's not going to be doing much of anything except for drinking water. So, like, if he constantly sees something move, and then he's going to get stressed out because he's slow and he don't know how to react to it. He'll try to react to it, you know. It's, it's not good for your snake. And uh, you want to put him in brumation anywhere between two and three months. I mean, I've had perfect luck with two. Um, two and a half seems to be a little bit more successful. And, uh... When you take them out, they won't eat right away. What I do is I put them in room temperature for about a week or two, like I do when I put them in brumation, and then jump them back on the heat tape. And they will sometimes shed before they want to eat, but um, one you know try about every or after about a week or two, try to feed it you know every two days until it starts to eat, and then when it does, just feed it as much as you can. Just beef it, beef it, beef it, and then it should shed again. And once it sheds again, it'll be ready to breed. You want to start pairing it up with your males and females, whatever you want to try to breed with, and watch them. I'm not going to get too much into detail what they do when they start breeding, because I'm going to make another uh, video of that. But this is just a short little tutorial for you guys of uh, what I do to put them in brumation and what not to do. So I'll be posting more videos too why these guys are in brumation of how to do certain things. If you guys have uh, anything that you want to learn or want to know about these, I might make another uh, popping video to show you how to sex a snake. and Just let me know, guys. Thanks.